I was never a big Sega fan. The only Sega titles I played as a kid were Sonic Heroes and Billy Hatcher on GameCube. Sega nowadays is known more as a publisher than a developer, and they have a lot of properties under their belt. Enter Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing Transformed, probably one of the biggest fan service games I've ever played. It's an amalgamation of dozens of Sega properties, from popular to obscure. It's a gorgeous looking game, despite being released seven years ago. The backgrounds really stand out with lots going on, and this is amplified by the transformation mechanic. This is the second game in the series, and the third title is coming out very soon, so I thought I'd cover this one, as it's a really fun game, and a unique one at that, especially when it comes to PC combat racing games, because there aren't a whole lot on the PC platform. When you have a combat racing game come out from a major publisher, it's always going to be compared to a Mario Kart, and this game is no exception. Usually the competition isn't up to snuff and falls just short when you have a kart racer come out that isn't Nintendo's, but when the main brand is trying and failing at making a new recipe, the competition seems to be a lot more appealing. In this regard, Sonic and Sega isn't better than most of the Mario Kart games. Hell, it doesn't really even hold a candle to the best ones but it is unique enough to stand out. The strongest point All-Stars Transformed has going for it when directly comparing it to Mario Kart is the unlockables. There are tons of time trials, tracks, and cars to unlock here. Some of the stages are really fun and unique. The game has a strong selection of characters to choose from, with exclusives on most of the platforms, but the PC is going to be the best version here, obviously, and it's mainly because it's got five free extra characters with a paid DLC, all of which have their own transformation vehicles and all-star abilities. The character selection system is a bit different from your newer Mario titles. Rather than pick your favorite character and then the vehicle, which is the most important part, Transformed has you pick your favorite character with a predetermined vehicle. You can adjust vehicle stats, but they are predetermined settings and some are locked until you level up your character. Which brings me to All-Star's biggest problem. While the game has tons of things to unlock and collect, and that can be very fun, so much of the game is locked off. Characters, stages, there's nothing wrong with unlocking and earning rewards, and believe me, I played tons of Mario Kart Double Dash and Smash Brothers Melee back in the day. I savored every new character and stage unlock I got. The satisfaction of unlocking everything is nice, but not having a ton to play with out of the gate kind of sucks if you're getting a group together with friends and you're all ready to play, but it's only about a handful of tracks to choose from. But it doesn't end there. There's also another huge hurdle with this game, the AI. When you're doing all these challenges, you gotta face against the AI. And they cheat. When you play the game on easy, there's little they can do to stop you making it good for quickly unlocking most of the game content. Unfortunately, when playing on normal or hard, the AI seem to ignore a lot of hazards and target you more so than each other. I've even witnessed the AI at times being immune twice to certain items when I initially deploy them, like the Hive Swarm item. Speaking of items, they aren't exactly memorable either. You got the snowballs and rockets as your more common items, which are essentially green and red shells respectively. Everything else is just a powered up red shell, a shield, a landmine, or a boost. Nothing really interesting like the lightning zap or blue shell from Mario Kart. There's also an all-star item. It doesn't drop often, but when you get a character unique animation allowing you to drive much faster and attack other enemies, it's neat, and there's even a notification from the game announcer when someone gets one. But it's a far cry from the character unique items from Double Dash. Transforming is probably the biggest part of this game, at least visually. At certain parts on a track, approaching a large ring will transform your character's vehicle to adapt to land, sky, or water. It's common to see two different types of vehicles racing side by side. This makes the maps a lot more interesting, and the spectacle of it all really is memorable. Jamming out to a remix track on a Sonic map while you're cruising on the water, while your friends are above you in the sky, it's pretty neat. Tracks can shift and change, so rather than having several of the same laps going on, the environments change up adding to the novelty of the transformation effect. So on your third and final lap of, say, the Nights into Dream stage, you're actually dodging attacks from a boss. It's kind of cool. Unfortunately, aside from the spectacle, Transforming doesn't do much. It's what really has kept the game memorable, but other than the visual novelty, it just changes your controls a bit. Oftentimes, I feel that vehicles with wheels just handle better, while the sea and air vehicles don't feel nearly as tight. Despite my problems with this game, it's still one of the best combat racing games you can play on PC if you're not willing to emulate. Driving controls are generally smooth, nailing players with items will always be fun, and the track selection and music are solid. Alright, so let's get this into the review criteria to wrap everything up. As usual with Quest for the Cows, I look at price, 
pick up and play, and lasting appeal. On the PC, for 20 bucks, you're getting a good selection of maps and characters. 21 tracks in total. You have four player split screen as well as online multiplayer. For 20 alone, it's a good value. For the pick up and play aspect, this game suffers from the earlier days of Sega PC ports. While it runs and looks nice, there is an annoying launcher where most of the controller configurations work, and the window doesn't even scale well, especially in Steam Big Picture mode, leading to some restarts. Sometimes you might also have to manually select what controller you want to use, which is great if you don't want to worry about the order in which you plug in your controllers, but it does mean that you're going to be going back to this menu a lot just to configure and set up everyone's controls. There's also the issue of unlockable content. The game could have given you more stages or at least Grand Prix Cups to start with. You have to unlock Grand Prix Cups one by one, and you only start with one at the beginning. On to lasting appeal. I only mentioned online multiplayer as a means to conveniently play with friends. As you'd imagine for a seven-year-old game, the player base for this game is non-existent online. Without online multiplayer, it's left to the single-player challenges to pick up the slack. But as I've mentioned before, Poorly designed AI make everything more frustrating. If you do want to unlock everything, there is a lot to do, and it's nice to boot up the game every now and then just to be engulfed in the atmosphere, the tracks, and the transforming that those give off, especially if you're into the Sega brand. It's definitely worth picking up on its many frequent sales, and I'm very excited to see what the sequel has in store. Sumo Digital make amazing titles, and this game is no exception. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. I'm out.